What's up everyone, Steven here from TechMaker. In the last couple of episodes, we built out this uh, beginning of a generative NFT project where we run this script and it will randomly generate a different uh, frog image. Uh, so the last time we ran it, it looked something like this. Um, in this episode, what I want to do is start building out uh, an ability for us to essentially do this dynamically via the web. Um, and generate these and store the files on the Aleph network. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. And then I think in the next episode, if you're if you're going to follow along all, all the way till the end, you'll find out that you need uh, essentially a JSON API um, with references to your image location for an NFT contract. In our case, an ERC seven twenty one contract, which we will build out all along the way. So don't worry about it if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, but essentially what we need to do is build out this JSON API and what we're going to do is sort of start stepping in that direction in this video. So um, that's kind of what we're going to do. Uh, along the way, you're going to learn how to create a file and save it on the ALF network with Python. So that's kind of the main concept of this video, but just to kind of give you an idea of where it fits into the universe, that's what we're doing. But anyway, let's dig in. So if we head over to the terminal, Actually, we need to go to the browser really quick, and I'm just going to point this out. I'm going to link to this down in the description of this video. Um, but in the tutorial on the ALEF GitHub about VMs, they have this command that you're going to want to run. Uh, pip3 install unicorn uh, or uvicorn ALEF client fast API and ETH account. We are using all of these in this code that I'm about to write. And I'm also pulling a little bit from a previous tutorial. It's all super, super simple. So you can pause the video and uh, take everything down. But if you haven't installed this stuff, you're going to want to do that. Um, and then you'll be able to follow along pretty easily. Again, there's a there's a couple of episodes that might be helpful that I'll link to in the description. Um, but any, anyway, so I'm back over here in my terminal. And essentially uh, what I'm going to do is change down, let's see what we got. I'm going to change down into my app. And um, let's go ahead and start the server, which, how do we do that? It's, I think I did that re recently. Here we go. So basically, if you're running on just straight up on your computer, you probably can just say uh, Uvicorn main app reload here. I'm running on Vagrant. Um, which is a virtual machine that I'm running um, on a Mac so that I can have a Linux system running. And uh, again, I'll link down in the description. Um, but in order for me to get this to run and connect to my actual local host, I have to add this host flag. So we'll go ahead and run that and um, just make sure everything's working. So we'll go to localhost 8000 and we get our message greetings from TechMaker. Okay, so... If you haven't followed along with the other episodes, you're probably a little bit lost, but we're going to clear that up right now. So I have this directory that I've created called app here. It has in it a file called main. And in here, I've imported a few things. And again, this is from a previous episode, so you can check that out. Um, but basically, we have a couple of things. We have a fast API, which allows us to do some of this API stuff down here. And we have this ALF client. So what I'm going to do here is basically set up a new route, uh, if that's what it's called in FastAPI, I'm not sure. And in this route, we're going to generate a new image, save it to uh, IPFS via ALEF, and then we're going to render back a link to that image stored on uh on IPFS. So let's do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a new route. And again, you don't necessarily have to do all of this to actually uh, post stuff to the ALEF network, but this is just, just kind of in the direction I'm going with this little project. So it's kind of the context I'm doing it in. Um, so what we'll do is just say like get, and then we need to make a route here. So we'll say slash NFTs um, slash ID. I don't need that pound sign. And then we'll do .json because that's typically what you see inside of a smart contract. And then I'm going to define a method here. So we'll say async def get NFT. 
And actually, to make this a little more clear, we might want to say, and I'm doing this a little bit for future reference because the next video we're going to deal with this, but we might say get or generate NFT. And then we'll say ID int like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, first of all, let me copy these requirements from my previous file that we've been working on in the last two videos. Okay, so I'm just going to import those things. Uh, I'm going to copy all of this code. And I'm going to just paste this here. And then uh, indent everything correctly. So I need to indent everything correctly. And then I'll also need to change these relative paths to go up a level because we were in a higher directory previously. Um, okay, so all of that should be fine. I need to comment, or not comment, tab that stuff in. So now we're going to save a final, and just to, uh, just to kind of clarify, because I already tested this a little bit, um, we'll change this to be nft.png. Okay, so now basically if anybody hits this endpoint, um, nft slash number.json, we're going to create an image and basically save it to the local file system, which ultimately isn't what we're going to want to do. Um, so this is kind of an intermediate video here. Um, but for now, what I want to do is go ahead and publish this to Aleph. So let's see how we can do that. So again, you will have to have uh, installed this Aleph client that uh, I, I showed you earlier from their documentation. But once you do that, you'll have access to several other things. So instead of just get posts, we can do create store, which is there's a few options whenever you want to upload files. So let me see if I can get this really quick without taking too much time. So if we go to the ALF client and we look at source, ALF client, and then asynchronous.py here. So there's a few different things. There's IPFS push, there's storage push, and so on and so forth. And you can call all of these methods and they do... Uh, different things, um, really. Uh, the the one you probably want to use the most is create store. So some of these things will just store a file, um, and it will be temporary, and then it will be garbage collected and deleted. So the way the ALF is meant to work, I think, and I, I may not get all this terminology exactly right, but my understanding is basically you want to use create store if you want to put something permanently on the ALF network. Um, and what it's going to do is going to create two things. It's going to either put a file on IPFS or in their storage solution, depending on which adapter you choose, basically. And then uh, and it will, if you use this create store, it will actually write a message into their database, which points at the, the image file and so on and so forth, and has a record of you uploading it. And if you create the message, again, I'm hoping I'm getting all this right, and you have enough ALEF tokens, it's essentially like you holding the tokens gives you access to file storage. So one of the next things we're going to do is build out a Dropbox kind of style app on top of ALEF. And um, in order for you to use it, basically you buy tokens once, and then that gives you a certain amount of memory um, that you can use to store files. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. We're going to use this create store. Um, but yeah, just keep all that in mind that there's different options. We'll do some more content on the more detailed aspects of this later. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and jump in and get this working. The one thing you have to realize if you're going to post a message to the network. So if you look at IPFS push, storage push, uh, first of all, I want to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Um, these don't actually require an account, um, whereas the create post, create aggregate, create store, all of these require an actual like blockchain account. In, the, in our case, we're going to use an Ethereum account. Um, and that's where you're going to need to hold the ALF. So anyway, it's all kind of side points a little bit, but uh, it's important stuff to know. So let's get back to the main deal, which is actually hooking up this... Uh, this code though.
Okay, so back in our editor, we've already imported create store. We also need to do uh, from a left client dot chains dot ethereum import eth account like that. And now what this is going to allow us to do is let's just come down here to the end. So we've already saved our image and everything to our local file system. So what we can do is say account equals eth account and then we basically need to pass in a private key. So what I'm going to do here, so just so nobody freaks out, this is my sort of like testing computer and I don't do any like real transactions on here. It's all tests or very, very minimal amounts of tokens. So um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and create an account called ALF Tester 2 and I'm just going to grab the private key. Um, so we'll do account details, um, export private key. And let's see how that goes. I hope that's wrong. Okay, so again, this is all fake. I'm never going to use this key. Don't use it either because um, it's public now. Okay, so put my private key there. And the next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and open up the file I want. So we're going to say file equals open. And then we'll do R for like raw string. And uh, we'll do the nft.png since we changed up the name. Give it the RB flag and then call dot read on it. And what we want to do basically is say await uh, create store. And this takes in a few arguments. So we're going to do file content equals and then we'll just do file. Um, we're going to say account equals account and we could just leave it there if we didn't care where this was going to be stored but I actually want to put the file on IPFS so that I get a nice friendly web URL back for where this lives and I'm just going to say storage engine equals and then we'll say uh, IPFS all lowercase and what I want to do basically is capture this in a hash because this returns a hash which is going to be where this lives on IPFS. And the last thing I want to do is basically just return uh, the uh, the hash in a message to the browser. So we're just going to send back some JSON so we'll say return and then we'll just say uh, URL and get do something like um, HTTPS IPFS.io slash IPFS slash and then what's the string? Is this how you do string interoperability or whatever you call it uh, in Python like that? Let's try that. Let's go check our server and see if it's still running. Okay, cool. So what we should be able to do is go to localhost 8000 slash NFTs slash one. And we're not using the ID for anything yet, if you're curious. We're going to get to that in the next episode. Uh, but if we go to slash NFTs slash one dot json it's gonna it should take a second and no that's not how you do that um i guess i could probably just append it plus hash maybe like that let's try that again internal server error string interpolation python literal string interpret uh, that's a long explanation um, maybe I need to do f f strings okay so let's just do f and then single curly braces okay f this is what you call learning on the go hopefully Hopefully we learned and this actually works. Um, let's refresh and see if we get an internal server error again. Okay, so that's not my hash. That's, well it is, it's, the, it's what's returned, but that's an actual object. What I want back is probably the item hash down here. 
So I can just say, uh, let's say results, and then here we'll say results.itemhash. So that's giving me back the entire record that was saved on ALEF. Internal server error, great. Um, no attribute item hash. Let's look at that one more. Well, let's go do this. Let's go to the Explorer, because we should be posting these files over here so you can see us storing a few files. Um, I guess I could probably select it like that. So we should have something like This is really similar to a lot of stuff I've used before, but uh, it's just just different enough to trip me up sometimes. So let's try that. Okay, cool. So now we have this IPFS IO slash IPFS blah blah blah. So let's go see our image. Okay, that's an invalid path. So let's print this out again really quick uh, with our. Let's go back to the code. Let's just print out the. Um, let's actually just print out the result. So we'll do return uh, data, and then do result, and we'll see what this looks like. Hopefully, it's a little easier to read. I need to install one of those JSON beautifier things on here. Um, where is my item hash? So that's my item hash right there. So I should probably pull this out of content item hash, just looking at that. It's a little hard to see like that. And then if we go and we replace um, this big long thing with this Q thing, now you can see we have a frog coming up. Okay, so let's just try that really quick. Um, and then what we'll do is say um, content. Actually, let's do this up here. Uh, First of all, let's uncomment that and comment that one. So result content item hash. Try one more time. And again, every time I refresh this page, I'm actually uploading a new thing to ALF, which is not what we want to do. So in the next episode, we're going to deal with that. But you can see that now it's working. So we have the full kind of cycle set up. So what this represents, or what it's going to represent ultimately, is the NFT metadata endpoint. So as we did in the previous episode, um, or one of the previous episodes up here, uh, we have this data, which is all hard-coded. Um, and then we have this, uh, back over in this file, sorry. Essentially, we are... Well, I think we actually uploaded that data to the network at some point, and we're getting just a single post that has all that data, and then we're parsing it. So we're going to take what we kind of hard-coded in this previous episode, and what's going to happen is when somebody hits this endpoint, if we've already generated the image for that NFT, we're just going to return back the metadata from ALEF the same way we're doing up here, which is going to have the IPFS URL in it already. If we haven't generated the NFT yet, what we're going to do is generate it on the fly, so it's going to be kind of lazy minting, um, and then return back the metadata once we've created the image, saved it on IPFS, saved the data in ALEF and all that stuff, then we're going to return back uh, the actual metadata. And then in the future, it'll sort of be like, uh, I think we're going to use the aggregate system potentially to cache you know, here's the results for this ID or something. I got to kind of figure out a few tweaks to that that don't quote me on all of that, but that's sort of the loose idea. So um, anyway, that's kind of it for this episode. We kind of went a little bit longer and did a little bit more side exploration than I had intended. If you made it this far, I appreciate you watching, and I'll talk to you in the next episode.